Hello everyone, I'm Priya Goyal and I'm a research engineer in Facebook AI Research. And I'm excited today to talk about how we scale distributed training to very large batch size and accurately train ImageNet in one hour. This work was done in joint collaboration with many people from Facebook AI Research and Applied Machine Learning Group at Facebook. Let's dive in. So first of all, why do we need to scale distributed training? In deep learning, accuracy scales with data and model size. And a lot of research in computer vision, speech, and NLP shows that as the data or the model size increases, accuracy increases. But larger data and larger model size means longer training time. And this is what a typical innovation or research cycle looks like, where you have an idea, you design and plan the experiment, perform the experiment, and once it finishes, analyze it and iterate. Now, what if the performing experiment step itself takes weeks or months? That's a lot of time before you can iterate and get some fruitful results. And that means really slow research cycle. For an example, let's look at the training time of few image classification models on ImageNet data set. On 8 GPU training, a ResNet 50 would take two days, a deeper ResNet model would take, ResNet 101 would take four days, Recent state-of-the-art ResNext model would take seven days, and a deeper ResNext model trained on a bigger version of ImageNet data set would take 14 days. And what if you want to train on internet scale data where billions and millions of photos and videos are being uploaded to websites like Facebook every single day? It will probably take months before you can get any fruitful result and really benefit from it. So as the data or the model size increases, it's important to keep the training time manageable. And distributed training can offer a potential solution to that. In our work, out of various variants to do distributed training, we choose to do synchronous SGD and weak scaling that can allow us to scale to very large batch size. But as we do distributed training, there are various kind of issues arise that lead to poor accuracy on the large batch size, and that makes it unattractive to use distributed training for day-to-day -day applications. And in our work, we develop techniques that can allow us to scale to very large batch size, for example, 8192. And using these techniques, we can also match the accuracy for a large batch training with a small batch training. The techniques we develop are also very generalizable. So if you want to scale training from one GPU to two GPU or more GPUs up to 256, the techniques can offer a very seamless transition without requiring any hyperparameter search. And at Facebook, given the access to train on large number of GPUs, we use these techniques to scale our batch size to 8192, spread across 256 NVIDIA Pascal GPUs, and we use Scafidu-based ResNet50 trainer to achieve top leading performance on ImageNet by training it in one hour. So I'll go into more details now, but I want to highlight the few challenges that we have to solve in order to do this. The first challenge is maintaining the accuracy as we go to large batch size. And second, we need to be able to scale very efficiently to be able to do this work in one hour. Let's first solve the, solve the accuracy challenge and see what are the various issues involved in matching accuracy for a large batch size. And for that, Let's first establish what our baseline is and what our goal looks like for large batch size training. These are the various variables that I will be referencing to for the next few slides. And the plot that you should see here is training error versus the number of epochs as the training progresses. The baseline model here was trained on up to eight GPUs with a batch size of 256 and a learning rate of 0.1. And our goal is to match the error on the training set, match the shape of this curve, and also match the accuracy on the validation set, which is 20, the top one error is 23.6. As a first step, let's just first scale the batch size without doing anything else. Let's keep all the hyperparameters same. And this is what our th the training looks like, the blue curve here. As we can see, the accuracy on the training set <coughs> Goes, goes very bad. The shape of the curve does not match. And on the validation set as well, the error almost doubles. So we need to do something to fix it. As our first step, 
we try out a theory where, a rule that a theory suggests. As we scale the batch size, the theory suggests that we should scale the learning rate by square root, time, square root, to, square root of the, batch, the scale factor. So here, as we go from a batch size of 256 to 8,000, that is, we scale the batch size 32 times, we scale the learning rate by square root of 32. So we go from a learning rate of 0.1 to 0.6. And from the blue curve here, we can see that the shape of the training curve still does not match, and there is also a huge gap in the accuracy on both training set as well as the validation set. So next we try out a simple guideline that we also find useful in our day-to-day -day work as we train on one GPU or two GPUs or more. The guideline was proposed by some work, but it was never really tested on batch size of this magnitude. The guideline is simple. It says that as you scale the batch size, you should scale the learning rate linearly. So here as we scale from the 256 batch size to 8,000, we scale the learning rate with it and train from point, goes from 0.1 to 3.2 learning rate for the training. And from the blue curve here, we can see that it works well. At least the shape of the training curve can match, but there's still, there is still a huge gap in accuracy on both the training set as well as the validation set. Based on these experiments and our experience on training large number of models, we think that in the beginning of the training, in the early phases, because of a large number of variations, the model will change very rapidly. And using the large learning rate of 3.2 can potentially cause various optimization issues and throw off the convergence. So we apply a constant learning rate warm-up, where we start from a learning rate of 0.1, use it for the first five epochs, and then go to the normal learning rate of 3.2 for the rest of the training. But this didn't work as we expected. Instead, it made things worse. As soon as the learning rate goes from 0.1 to 3.2, the training error spikes, and it can never recover during the rest of the training, leading to huge gap in accuracy on both the training set as well as the test set. And this led us to develop a gradual learning rate warm-up. You start from a learning rate of 0.1 and increase it by a very small step at every iteration for the next five epochs until it gets to the original learning rate of 3.2. And this seemed to work very well. On the training set, we can match the shape of the curve, we can match the accuracy, as well as on the validation set, we can match the accuracy within some standard deviation. And this simple technique can allow us to scale on a from a, on a very large number of batch sizes, ranging from 64 to 8,000. And it can offer a very seamless transition as you look to scale training without requiring any hyperparameter search. Now, this was a very simple strategy that allowed us to match accuracy on large batch size, but there are many other subtle implementation details that are also very important for matching the accuracy. We don't have the time to go into those details now, but they have been written down in the paper. The archive link is right here, and I will be also happy to answer questions during the Q&A sessions and also at our cafe to boot tomorrow. So now we have solved the accuracy challenge. Let's see how we scale to a large number of, a very large number of GPUs efficiently. And for that, let's first see what happens in a distributed training. Let's say we have K machines. Each machine has eight GPUs. Now, during a single iteration of the training, each of these GPU will have its own copy of network parameters and their local gradients. At every iteration, we have to synchronize these gradients within the machine and also across the machine. And then, once this is done, then we can proceed to the next step of the training. This synchronization, we call it all reduce, and it's also a key component for scaling efficiently. And it's also very challenging because it has to happen very fast, and it also has to scale to a large number of GPUs. But for ResNet 50, we also have another challenge. A ResNet 50 architecture gives 214 buffers that need to be synchronized across all GPUs. And these buffers can vary in their size greatly. Some of them can be very small, let's say a few kilobytes, and some of them can be very large, let's say a few megabytes. So in order to scale efficiently, 
Since the small buffers would be latency bound, the large ones would be bandwidth bound, we need communication algorithms that are efficient in terms of both latency and the bandwidth. So at Facebook, we designed and implemented an, an effective communication library called Glue. Glue is 100% open source. It's available with Cafe2 and supports it out of the box. And it implements various state-of-the-art communication algorithms. For communication side, it, it, trap nickel, it traps nick, NVIDIA Nickel for intranode communication. And for intranode communication, it implements algorithms on top of top of POSIX sockets API. And using Cafe2, Glue, and our scaling techniques, and 100% commodity hardware, we can achieve 90% scaling efficiency on 256 GPUs and train ImageNet in one hour. We also tried going to large number of GPUs, and we can still achieve the efficiency, but accuracy requires some work. And to highlight the magnitude of computation involved, our resident 50 architecture has 25 million parameters, four gig flops per image, and an ImageNet data set has approximately one million samples that need to be processed 100 times, all, all of the samples. This means, overall, we have about half exaflops that we need to compute in order to train the classifier accurately. And using CAFE2, 100% commodity hardware, and our scaling techniques, we could do it all in just one hour. So in short, you get far without specialized hardware. Here are, here are various references. Glue is available via GitHub. CAFE2 is open source. Hardware specifications can be found on opencompute.org, and our scaling efficiency, scale, ma matching accuracy techniques can be found on our archive link. And I'll be taking Q&A with Lucas at the back. Uh, please come find us and ask questions. <laughs>